Although the Axeman archetype has been suppressed a bit, uh, you know, <laughs> at least as opposed to their glory days in which they were tier zero, like nigh unstoppable, like everyone was playing it. Uh, these days, they're kind of more of a niche, uh, niche deck, but it is fun to kind of play up against them every once in a while because the strategies they're in are so... I think it's one of the most complex yet kind of like straightforward that, you know, <laughs> that silly sounding oxymoron. <clears throat> But you'll see that over the course of this this match. So uh, I don't know if I've played, if I've uploaded a match of this Aridin yet, but this is Gwenelman's, um I'm not really sure what they called it specifically, but it's kind of like a mid-rangey kind of Aridin. You have things like Artifact Compression, which is really nice against things like Spell of Tal, against now, uh, of course, in this deck, Axeman, uh, and against other decks that have like a very high valuable target. Even if like the tempo you're getting is low, it can shut down things in a very effective way uh strength boosting uh it mostly is really good against Skellige because you you eliminate that possibility of revival so it's almost like a hard counter for them but otherwise uh just kind of give a brief intro of the deck i play out the uh the wild hunt hounds of course and then i do things like I think it's called like Sly Lizard or something like that. And Sly Lizard is a new card that allows you to boost a unit in your, uh, to consume a unit in your graveyard, and you get to play a copy of that from your deck. So it's almost like a, a Reaver Hunter or a Reaver Scout rather from your graveyard. It's really cool. But otherwise, so I'm going to clear skies here, just get rid of his weather. Uh, it's not the best to trade my silver for his silver weather, my silver clear for his silver clear, but. Uh, I, I was, funny enough, funnily enough, I didn't actually catch on that this was Axeman until he literally played an Axeman. So I probably could have waited a little bit on that, that weather clear, but he placed his spy on that, that ranger route anyway. So if he did actually want to keep the round going, he totally wouldn't have been able to. So this is a pretty big point. So of course he's played spy. Uh, I went second. He's played a spy. He's flipped a coin. I'm ahead of Teppo. He's. And he's got really nothing going on here. Now, I don't want to play a high tempo play like another uh, <clears throat> or I don't want to play another key to my win condition or a high tempo play like in uh, the Wild Hunt Hound or anything else. So instead, I'm going to play Outdoor Gray. I could either pick Savage Bear or Ekimara. Ekimara is better since he's looking to get out of the round here pretty soon. And this will allow me to counter his Mark Bar going into the next round. So we'll just skip ahead to that because that's exactly what he does. He just skips. <clears throat> so by this point, I could very well just dry pass. Keeping in mind that uh, I didn't actually see the telltale signs of Axeman. Uh, not like the number one thing. The number one thing I should have noticed is when they play uh, Crack on Crate, uh, Crack on Crate, or Discard Brand to pull out Skirmishers, or Crack on Crate to pull out Mark Varg, because those are some pretty high tempo single card plays that allows them to stay in the round if they start to fall behind when they're trying to set up their Axeman uh, combos. The second biggest thing I sh that should have ticked me off is the Silver Weather. <clears throat> it's not like 100% guaranteed that th it is an Axeman, but it's a pretty likely scenario, especially, you know, uh, if there's not a one particular uh, deck archetype going around that uses those uh, particular strategies, which generally speaking, there isn't. Because, you know, if you're going to play, like, Mark Varg or something, you're going to play Discard Brand, play Discard Brand. <laughs> you're going to play Discard Brand. <laughs> exactly. So, anyway. <clears throat> so, he plays out his Ekimara to just pass the round. Totally normal stuff. So, getting into this third round, I'm gonna, I'm at a bit of a disadvantage. Because, uh, as as I've said already, he's going to be playing Axeman, which means I had to be able to beat his round three Axeman with my round three uh, control Aridin. Or mid-range Aridin, whatever. It's kind of like, I'm still not used to naming the archetypes in Gwent just yet. I don't think anyone is really. Except maybe Swim. <laughs> and, you know, the top players like that probably have a pretty good handle on what to call these kind of archetypes. But I'm still kind of carrying over from Hearthstone, both because that's what I know and because that's probably what most people know. So it's it's a mid-range Aridin. You have some control options. You have some options like Garius, which will do some pretty good tempo plays, some high tempo plays. <clears throat> 
So one of the things I'm thinking is using artifact compression. It doesn't matter if I use it early, use it late. Uh, the, the end result is going to be the same at every point of the game. So there's not much point in holding onto it, really. Uh, the only reason you would hold onto it is in rounds one and two when you're trying to play a little bit more. When you're trying to weave that artifact compression in a, a more. In a better way, basically. <clears throat> like maybe you don't want to use it early because you want your opponent to try and rely on that single combo piece to try and win them the round. And then when you absolutely annihilate it, they have to just give it up. <clears throat> okay, so now that I've got I've got a pretty good handle on the situation and keep in mind Axemen can only grow in strength when they're actually hitting something on the uh, direct opposite row, so which means on the range row. Of course, since he's playing Skellige and since he has a whale harpooners, he's going to be able to do that fairly easily. <clears throat> but no problem. So I put the wyvern I'm going to use the Wyvern to hit his, uh, to hit his Axeman. The big deal here is that I'm trying to kill one of these Axemen and then artifact the other one. Artifact compression the other one. If I can do that, then I'm getting rid of two combo pieces. That would only leave uh, one slash two because he'd be able to revive one of those. So that's a pretty good play, being able to boost his Axeman by three points, which puts me out of range of killing it. I was hoping he actually wouldn't uh, do any damage to that range rogue so that I could just swipe or lacerate rather and then kill it. I go for my second weather, uh, weather hunt hound with the sly lizard, which is such a cool card. There's a really cool card for monster in particular as well, uh, because it's, it's not it doesn't just work as a regular reaver scout, which would have been a, admittedly a little bit boring. Instead, it pulls it from your graveyard, which, you know, it just it feels really, really because, you know, it, it, it harvests that unit that died and it eats it and it creates a new one. It's really cool. It's a cool themed card. Just goes to show you like how creative the devs of this game are to be able to do things like that, like still have like the uh, the tutoring card or whatever you want to call it. But designed in such a way that makes it unique to that faction. Like you see that a lot in the, uh, you see it a lot to a lesser extent in the weather uh, single row weather uh, single row weather clears, which Skellige got recently, which is really nice. I would definitely be looking to put that card in some deck sometime. So there's a will harpooner. He's basically just going to be doing that the entire game, uh, the entire uh, round. Just constantly using the whale harpooner to get my stuff in that that uh, Skellige storm. Next, I follow up with the Drowner, get that Axeman out of the range row so he can't just continue to get buffed up. Similarly, it also weakens his Axeman so now I can kill it and he is not going to be getting as much combo potential off. <clears throat> Uh, he may actually no never mind. I was gonna say he may have actually wanted to try and play the whale harpooner on the range route to try and get some damage off on there so his axeman can grow a little bit. But I'm assuming he doesn't actually have any more weather, so it wouldn't actually help him too much. Uh interestingly, I'm not sure he actually is running any gold weather. He's playing this, he's playing Burner Brand, he's playing get Geralt. Maybe he just got really unlucky, he didn't play into any of his uh his weather. So I used uh, my navigator to pull out my warrior, I think it's called Wild Hunt Warrior or something like that. Use him, even if I'm getting less value on killing that uh, the Axeman because it's in the ice anyway, it's going to be taking damage over time anyway. I wanted to just go ahead and kill it and not, let, not leave anything up to chance. I just want to make sure to get rid of those pieces, even if it is less effective. So he got, goes ahead, revives it immediately. I was more or less expecting that, which is totally fine. Now I'm trying to do some damage to him a little bit here. I've more or less kind of knew I was going to want uh, win this game uh, until this happens. So he plays out one swipe or one lacerate. It's a pretty big deal. Lacerate's a big card. It hurts a lot. He's still getting these. Uh, he's still getting these procs off more than I thought he would, especially on that back one. I didn't expect that one to be buffed up as much as it has been. It's pretty, pretty insane. So I played on my address. I played on the range row. Uh, I'm not really looking to get the the frost effect off. But I do want to make sure to line up on a row where I'm going to get some more lacerate targets off and not just put in the melee row. Plays out another lacerate and he plays on that row instead of the siege, which is maybe a mistake. Why did he play it on the melee? He should have played it on the ranged. 
then he would have boosted this up. Wait, did he just make the mistake that lost from the game? Why did he do that? Why did he play on the melee row? Yeah, I think unless I'm missing something obvious, he should. He, I think he should have just played on the range row because he uh, the difference that he may have lost would have just been boosted onto his unit anyway. But whatever. So at last rate, boost things by five. Oh, was he trying to get rid of one unit? But he could have done the same down here. I don't know what he was doing. I don't know what that was about. So that happens. He plays out his freaking third lacerate. He plays his three lacerates. Insane. Oh, is it because he knew he had two lacerates or something? I don't know. Something like that. <clears throat> so things are looking pretty uh, pretty grim here. But of course, artifact compression. It's the very last card. It doesn't need to be the very last card. But I go. I went ahead and saved it just for dramatic effect. And there you have it. I win by, what is it? One point. I win by a single point. It gets axed. <laughs> I went to act. I went to blows with an axeman in round three with like ten cards left and managed to come out on top. One of the big reasons why I was able to shut down one combo piece. He revived it, but that's okay. I did stop its uh its forward momentum by drowning it. Drowner, <laughs> drowner, ink. I get, by drowning it to the siege row. He could have placed it on the range, and that might have been better. No, what I think what he needed was like more whale harpooners or something, or he really needed more weather cards. He only had one, and also maybe he used his last rating correctly because, like, again, this is one point difference. I think if he used his last rating on the C0, he probably would have won that, but it was close. That was fun. Nothing, nothing too, nothing too heavy here to to cover as a a VOD review topic. It was just a lot of fun. You don't often see a lot of Axemen, but it's still uh, it's still interesting to play against because, like I said. The complexes, I mean, the strategies can be really complex, but at the same time, they can be really straightforward, like you saw, particularly in the round three of this match, where, yes, he was he was setting up these huge combo pieces to grow really, really big, but all it took was a single artifact compression to effectively win the game. I won with more or less a single card, right? It's pretty crazy. Thanks for watching.